In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the knock sensor on this Mazda 6. It's located behind the intake, which we have to remove to get to this, so let's get started. Let's remove the engine cover, pull up on it and set it aside. Let's loosen up this clamp that holds the air intake onto the air filter housing. Use a 10 millimeter socket. You don't have to remove it, you just have to loosen it up so it releases pressure. Following this intake tube down, remove this hose and just twist it to the side. And there's another clamp over here. Same thing, 10 millimeter socket. Loosen this one up as well. Now we should be able to pull on this and remove it. Whichever side is easiest, doesn't really matter. Pull it up like this. Take it off the throttle body. If you have to pry it off, just be very careful where you pry. You don't want to damage this. There we go, set that aside. Use an eight millimeter socket and remove the four bolts that hold the throttle body onto the intake. You can unplug it and disconnect this hose or remove the bolt if you want, but I'm just going to leave this attached to the vehicle and plugged in, I'll just push it to the side. With those removed, you can pull the intake right aside, just leave it here. With some pliers, pinch on this hose clamp, pull it off, and get the hose off of the intake. Sometimes these hoses get stuck, so it helps to give them a little twist. That'll break them free, but if you do this, make sure you don't twist it too much or crush it too much with the pliers so you don't break the hose. Once it breaks free, pull it aside. Let's remove this top one, pinch the clamp, pull it up, Twist the hose and remove it from the intake. There we go. Now let's release the retainers for the wiring harness, this main harness that runs across the top of the intake. There's one retainer over here. For this, you can just use a trim tool or you can go on the back side and squish in on the two tabs that hold this retainer on. There's another one over here, same style. With this pried out, this harness won't move. It can it'll still stay here, but at least we can get it off of the intake manifold. There's another retainer at the end here. And then if you follow this harness down, there's another one right here. Okay. On the right hand side of the air intake, as you're looking at it from the front, you'll see the map sensor. Press on the tab with whatever you have here. I'm going to press on it with a pick just so I can reach it. Pull the connector down. Looking behind that map sensor, you'll see some wires onto this retainer here. We'll have to pop the retainer off since it's clipped onto the air intake. Just pry it out of the way. Underneath the vehicle, you'll notice that on the main skid shield, there is a smaller one that allows you access to the underneath of the intake. So remove this eight millimeter screw. And with that off, you'll be able to pull this out. All right, now looking from underneath, you can see where the bottom bolt goes through the intake and onto the engine block. This is a 10 millimeter headed bolt. We have to remove this one. And I'm gonna remove it first. That way the rest of my work is gonna be done from up top. Break it free and just remove it all the way. Once you break it free, you should be able to spin it off by hand. Take it out. Now while we're down here, let's unplug this retainer or disconnect the retainer for this wiring harness. There we go, set that aside. Following the harness further down, you'll see that there is one last retainer on this side. Down here we have to uh, unclip it. Best way I found is to use a pick or a pocket screwdriver from the back side. Pry it out like that. And then unclip it from the bottom. There we go. Set it aside. Remove the hose that goes on the radiator from the overflow tank. Pry it out and pop it up. Do the same on this side. There we go. There's a wiring harness going through it, but if you tilt it like this, you should be able to remove it. 
Now we have five 10 millimeter headed bolts to unbolt from up top here. They go in a zigzag pattern at the top of the intake. I'm gonna start with the two outer ones, then the two middle ones, and then the center one goes through here. Just break them free one at a time, and then loosen up and remove all of them. Now with all of them broken free, remove them all. All the bolts are the same, no need to keep them separate. At this point, the intake is unbolted. However, there is one vacuum hose that's behind the intake underneath there. So as we pull this away, we'll have to undo that vacuum hose. Now wiggle the intake. It's probably gonna be stuck on the head from the gaskets. Pull the wiring harness up and out of the way. Make sure it doesn't get caught on anything. And now we should be able to get this right out of here. Now there is that vacuum hose that's behind it, which we can reach right now, unplug it, and that will allow us to pull the rest of the intake right up and off. Now that the intake's out of the way, you can see the knock sensor right here. Let's unplug the knock sensor, press on that tab, slide the connector off, and now use a 10 millimeter socket and unbolt the sensor. It is fairly tight, but once it breaks free, you should be able to remove this bolt by hand. Take the bolt out, and there's the sensor. Make sure that the mounting area is clean. So take a razor blade. If yours is good, leave it. Mine is a little bit corroded on the side, so I'm using this razor blade to just scrape off the corrosion that has built up. If this sensor doesn't sit perfectly flat, it can have a wrong reading. So it can send the improper signal to the computer. That looks perfectly clean. So let's get the bolt and the new sensor. Slide the two together and thread the bolt in with the sensor. As you thread it in, hold the sensor in the position that it was originally in, not just for the connector, but you wanna make sure that it is sitting exactly like the manufacturer intended so that it can take a proper reading. Speaking of, it is important to torque this for that same reason, so let's get the torque wrench. The torque for this is 15 foot-pounds. There we go. Plug it in. When you plug it in, make sure the connector clicks. There we go. Now let's scrape off the intake ports with a razor blade or anything that you have that is gentle enough not to dig up this surface. This is aluminum, so it's fairly soft. You wanna get off all of this debris, any corrosion that you might have and carbon buildup. Doesn't have to look perfect. Make sure you don't get any debris in the runners, intake runners here. If you think you might get some in there, stuff a rag in there, but obviously don't forget it in there. That would be a bad day. You wanna make sure you do this to all of the ports, clean everything off. Take some brake parts cleaner on a clean rag and just wipe everything off. Make sure the surface is degreased and free of any debris that would prevent the gaskets from sealing up. When we installed the intake, make sure you double check the gaskets. If they're stiff or flat, replace them. They will not seal up. These are in okay condition, so they're good to reuse. If yours are soft, pliable, and still have some space here where they're not completely flat up against the intake, you're good to reuse them. The same applies to the throttle body gasket here, which is also good to reuse for me. With our mating surface clean, we can now install the air intake back in. Make sure you don't get any wires caught on the gaskets. You don't want those to break. And before you actually put it on all the way, make sure you put the vacuum hose or the PCV hose down here back onto the intake port. It'll be a lot easier to do it now rather than later. Still can't see it very well, but try to line it up. All right, there we go. That's installed. And now you want to bring the intake closer to the head get the wiring harness over all of these retainer clips. Make sure these hoses don't get pinched in there, throttle body, all of that. 
that is perfectly lined up right here. So let's start in the bolts. I'm gonna focus on all of the top bolts first. I'm gonna leave the bottom one for last. I'm even gonna torque these first, then I'll do that one because these are the important ones. That is just a support. You want the intake runners to be fully, equally seated up against the head first. Doesn't matter which ones you start first when it comes to just starting them on. Just whatever is easiest so it can stay on here. But I will torque them in a sequence, of course. Okay, they're all started. So I'm going to start by snugging up the center one and then going in a cross pattern to the outer ones. Let's torque them. The torque for these bolts is gonna be 13 foot-pounds. You're gonna to wanna to start in the center and work your way in a cross pattern towards the outer ones. Let's double check them all. This time I'm just going to go down the line. All right, those are all tight. Now let's install the mounting bolts through the bottom. Snug it up. The torque for this is also 13 foot pounds. However, I can't fit a torque wrench in here. So I'm just gonna get a longer ratchet, put some leverage on it and snug it up. That's pretty tight right there. Install the cover and put the bolt back in, snug it up. Let's resecure the wire with all of the retainers starting from one side, working our way towards the other side. Make sure that when you lock them in, they click so that the wire can be properly secured. Follow the harness, clip it in wherever else it needs to be clipped in. If you unclipped anything else, clip the wiring harness down underneath the uh, map sensor. And then while we're here, plug in the map sensor. Let's get these hoses reseated on the intake. Make sure they go down all the way. Let's get the hose clamps back over. I like to put them back in the same position that they came off of, or at least very close, because they, the hose kind of molds to the clamp, so it helps it seal up better. There we go. Let's reattach the throttle body. I'm gonna start in this one bolt so I can get it centered up. Once this one's started, start in your other ones. There are four eight millimeter headed bolts in total. I'm gonna snug these all up going in a cross pattern. Of course, I will torque them so with my air ratchet, I'm not gonna go very tight. Torque for these is 90 inch pounds. We're gonna go in a cross pattern to make sure that gasket gets squished down evenly. If you are unable to torque these at such a low torque, just make them nice and snug, about a quarter turn after they bottom out. Double check them. All right, 
Let's reinstall the intake uh, snorkel. Let's reinstall the intake snorkel. Make sure you don't put it on backwards. It won't actually fit if you try to. This side is bigger than this one. And you want to make sure that it seats all the way. A lot of times this lip folds in if you don't put it on right and then it won't seal up. Now let's tighten up these two clamps, 10 millimeter socket. When you tighten these, you don't want to over tighten them. You want to just squish them a little bit. As soon as it starts squishing on it, if you can still spin it, tighten it a little more. That's tight right there. I can't spin it anymore. Do the same to this one. That's it. Don't forget about this PCV hose. Reconnect that. Let's slide the overflow tank back down. Make sure this wiring harness is out of the way. And once it gets uh, seated in here, it's going to have to click into place to lock in. So tap it on both ends. You should not be able to easily pull it back out. Also make sure it's flush on the bottom. And then reconnect the hose to the radiator. And there you go. Reinstall your engine cover, line it up with the oil fill cap of the dipstick and of course the four pins. Press it on, make sure it's secured. Turn on the engine, make sure it runs right, and there you have it. Take it for a road test. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.